Good afternoon, everyone. This is Blendrix with Blendrix Audio Academy. I have uh, a lot of stuff to cover real quick, so let's get down to it. This is the final uh, assignment that I had for a Berkeley College of Music uh, class I've been taking. I've been instructed to take my favorite synth and explain uh, the amp envelope types. The first being switch, then percussive, damped percussive, sustaining, and quirk. I was instructed to use my favorite synth. Um, one of my New favorites is Animoog, which is a synthesizer that's made for uh, exclusively for the iOS. Uh, unfortunately, it's not a VST, so I can't use it directly in the computer. So what I'm having to do here is route um, MIDI signal out through the network and then uh, have it play the notes on the um, on the device itself and then have those notes played in through my sound card here. That's the one that looks like a radar scope. The other iPad screen that you should be seeing there is um, an application called Touchable, which is an Ableton Live controller. I'm using it to control every um, everything that we're going to be looking at today here, launching the clips that will control the attack, decay, sustain, and release parameters of the envelopes. And then um, also, you, you, it'll show you a display on the bottom half where you can actually see the uh, values of the ADSR um, parameters all compared to each other. So without further delay, let's get into it. The switch is on and off. It's binary. It's, uh, it has zero attack, zero decay, full sustain, and zero release. As you can see there at the bottom. That kind of sound is particularly useful um, in situations where you want a really ripping bass line or, um, for instance, you want to use it as a carrier signal for such a, like a gate device that you want to use to make glitch effects. The percussive amp envelope type um, is um, a little bit different shape. As you can see, the, it, the uh, attack is still turned all the way down to zero. There is a, a little bit of decay, zero sustain, and a little bit of release. And every time that note hits, no matter how long you hold it, it will play the same amount of time every time. So here's what it sounds like. Okay. Damped percussive is slightly, it's basically the same sort of concept, but the decay and the, um, and the release are turned up a little bit. Um, and instead of sounding like an object hitting something, this one sounds a little bit more like something being plucked, like a string. And I think the musical uses for that are pretty self-explanatory. The sustaining note is a little more like a horn or a string instrument uh, where it takes a little bit of time before it comes up to its full volume. Uh, it peaks, comes back down, and then sustains at a slightly lower level and then releases. And you'll see the shape of that waveform in the first iPad window here in just a moment. And that envelope shape is very useful for emulating the sounds of, like I said, horns and strings and things like that. Now, the quirk envelope type is, um, it's quirky. I had never even heard it before. Uh, the instructor said that uh, he'd actually discovered it by accident. I can't actually see any um, particularly useful um, ways to put this into any sort of musical uh, project. Anything that this can accomplish uh, can be accomplished using any of the other envelope types, um, just arranging the notes differently. So, I mean, you'll hear what it sounds like. Basically, what's it's happening is that when you play a long note, it sounds like a short note. And when you play a short note, it sounds like a long note. So um, the uh, decay is mostly turned down on that, but a little bit. And the release is turned up. The, the key point on this is the attack and sustain are completely zeroed out. And the release is uh, quite a bit higher than anything else. And that's what causes this weird effect. So I hope this has proven useful to you guys. Uh, feel free to hit me up and ask me any questions you might have. Have a good one.